And thank you again. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Allison. I am uh, one of the owners of Skydive Vancouver Island, along with my husband, Gord. Um, and yeah, today is the second of our uh, annual Skydive Vancouver Island Safety Seminar Series. This is actually our fifth year in doing them, uh, but it's our third year for doing a seminar that's specific for instructors and coaches. Uh, so again, really welcome you all here tonight. I appreciate that you've taken out the time uh, to spend with us and to our Dustin, who I'm going to introduce here shortly. Just a few housekeeping things. You are all muted. Uh, that is just for respect and flow of the, the conversation so that no one's accidentally interrupting everybody. But we will have some interactions and um, stuff throughout the whole entire presentation. So if you're not familiar with Zoom, where we will have uh, some conversations is in the chat function. So if you see on your um, the bar for Zoom, there's a chat option in there and you can just easily type in that chat as Dustin is probably getting some feedback from everyone. There is also ability to ask questions uh, or to make reactions and stuff. But when you are asked for questions, there is also a reaction tab in your um, Zoom bar, I guess it's called. And there's one in there. Actually, you can even look on the very right hand side. You'll see uh, some dots and it's a raise hand icon. So if I just raise my hand like that, it indicates to me that people have their hands raised and that's either time for questions questions or if you want to discuss some input or anything like that. Once we have reached out to you, I'm just we're going to ask you to unmute in some situations and then you can lower your hand after that. Um, so yeah, patience with the technology as always, but uh, that's about that. So I'm just going to go on and straight into this. It is our pleasure to introduce Dustin Renz as our guest speaker today. Uh, Dustin is not only a new member of the CSPA Coaching Working Committee, uh, he's also the CSPA uh, COP processor. And this guy has a lot of ratings. So he's a skydive school examiner. He's a skydive school instructor, coach to JM, GCI. He last year accomplished the goal of getting his UPT Sigma Vector Tandem Instructor rating. And well, just all around a great guy. And he's got a whole bunch of accolades as well with scuba diving. So uh, he's pretty active out there. Dustin is a dedicated coach and instructor with over 1,100 jumps. He's passionate about developing skydivers, coaches, and instructors. We're very blessed that Dustin works for us full time. Uh, well, full time time in his world along with real life jobs but full-time for us uh dustin has completed the coaching associations of canada's learning facilitator and coach evaluator programs and is currently completing the cspa lf program huge accomplishments in getting through all of this uh, in his skydiving career he volunteers again as a cspa coaching working committee member and as i said the cop processor uh without further delay Dustin, again, thank you. And I am going to hand the stage over to you. All right. Let me just make sure I'm sharing this. Got too many screens here. Does that look right? That looks great. All right. So, uh, yeah. Welcome to the coach and instructor safety review slash general review seminar. Um, and thanks for the opportunity to present it. I always uh, I enjoyed, you know, putting these things together because it actually forces me to dig into the books and think about things. So, um, so I kind of broke this down into a few different categories of um, what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, it's my idea is not really to uh, rehash information that was shared already in the safety day, but um, to discuss some instructor and coach specific items um, and just some experience I had. Um, so hopefully this presentation will only take uh, 
two hours because there's not too many people here, but no, I'm kidding. Well, we shouldn't be too, too long, but um, your participation is encouraged because I would like to learn from you guys too. Let's see. So I know Austin already introduced me a little bit, um, uh, but just real quick, um, I have recently got on the coaching working committee as uh, as one of the members and the COP processor. So it's my turn for everybody to hate me. Um, I've also have some experience, like you mentioned, in scuba diving. So I've been teaching scuba diving for about 12 years now as well. Uh, and I teach my real job too, uh, doing, uh, training. Uh, I wouldn't really consider myself an expert in skydiving or teaching, but, um, um, I do have quite a bit of experience teaching adults. And I do also realize that there's probably a whole bunch I can learn from everybody else too. So, uh, hopefully we can talk about those things. I, uh, you know, get everybody's wheels turning as we start into the new season. So I threw this little bonfire in here uh, to remind me, to remind you that this, hopefully this presentation will be just kind of like a discussion around the uh, the fire that drops on at the end of the day. Uh, if anybody has any ideas or wants to chime in, please, uh, by all means, uh, either you know, write it out in the chat or raise your hand and Allison will unmute you. So uh, when Allison said I had to do a instructor presentation, I wasn't really sure exactly what I wanted to talk about, but I kind of categorized a bunch of random points into these four categories, uh, which we'll cover. Uh, so obviously the safety aspect uh, and then there were some concepts I just wanted to review with the coaches and instructors. Uh, CSPA updates, uh, some of the new stuff that's going on with CSPA this year, and as well as my collection of random thoughts and points. So, uh, instructor and coach safety. So, I have a question for you guys. What do you do or what can you do to promote safety in skydiving as instructors and coaches. Not everybody all at once. Model it, yeah. So like uh, leading by example. Leading by example, right on. Anybody else? Oop, did I just delete something? There we go. Continue to learn and educate yourself. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah, we're always learning. You're never going to be the best at everything. Keep an eye out for the newer jumpers. Sure, always a good idea. Pretty easy to recognize who's a, who's a new jumper. All right, so we will go on to some of the points that I quickly jotted down when I was thinking about it. Uh, so yeah, Dave has a good point. Don't be a jerk to, uh, to the novices. They're there to learn. They're paying a lot of money for you to teach them. So, uh, it is important to treat them with respect. So this slide, I just kind of threw down what I came up with real quick. And the first point was, uh, leading by example. So as professional coaches and instructors, it's important that we demonstrate what we expect to see of others. Uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, being the guy that people are afraid to do dumb things around. I'm, I'm happy to be that guy at my drop zone because then I know, you know, it's keeping things safe. Uh, oh, I'm missing my, where did it go? Uh, encourage learning. So, uh, encourage people, you know, to take different courses, canopy courses, um, reviewing material, that sort of thing. Encourage people to attend safety seminars, uh, anything like that. And learn from others. So, um, 
you might be the best skydiver in the world, but there's still always something to learn from others. Uh, it was actually really surprising to me when I started teaching people more in the classroom of how much I was learning from them. Because uh, you'll be blown away by the amount of questions that people ask you, and it kind of forces you to do your own research and and whatnot. And also the teaching to the adult learner a lot of uh, a lot of the learners already know what instructional techniques were good for them and you'll kind of get a get a feel for how people understand and it's only gonna help you in your skydiving instructional progression so don't be afraid to learn from others and be humble and safe sport so i'm sure we've all heard of uh this term already uh safe sport so we it is important to be uh have a welcoming and accepting environment where everybody uh you know can come out and learn to skydive and be part of the part of the skydive family uh and not just in that regard to be a safe sport but also fostering an environment where people aren't afraid to ask questions. Uh, I've seen people, you know, particularly the shy people, if they're not feeling like they're welcome inside the group or whatever, they're going to be less likely to ask any questions, ask any questions, you know, ask safety questions, those sorts of things. So we need to encourage a kind of environment where people aren't afraid to ask those questions. Too many things popping up on my screen here. There we go. All right, so uh, some safety considerations uh, I quickly jot down. So the things to consider are personal factors. So I think the first question when you're going to teach or coach somebody should be, you know, are you ready to, to perform those activities before you start considering whether or not they're prepared to start it. Uh, the factors uh, that affect the student and the novice, and then external factor considerations. So like I said before, are you ready to teach? Are you showing up hungover, uh, tired, those sorts of things? Are you prepared to teach? So that includes having the right mindset. Uh, being well prepared for your lessons, uh, current, those sort of things. So currency and jumping, maybe it's been, you know, all winter and you have a novice to coach and you haven't jumped in six months. Maybe it's a good idea to do a few jumps to get the dust off sort of thing. You have the right equipment to, to coach your novice. Are you up to date on current standards? So uh, standards change all the time, uh, particularly over winter. So it's important to stay in the know, review the material, look at the PIMS, uh, and be up to date on the current standards for uh, whatever the novice is trying to accomplish. Is there sufficient time? So I absolutely hate being rushed. So if and I have no problem saying, uh, you know, we need more time to coach the skill properly. Drop zones are usually receptive to this sort of thing. So um, don't rush yourself just to get one more jump in or to push push your novice through that sort of thing. Give yourself enough time to uh, to, to do all the necessary training and skills. So uh, the new uh, student and novice factors, so kind of similar to the instructional factors that Homer Simpson took me a long time to delete the background. Uh, so is your student or novice in the correct mindset? Uh, are they going, are, do they, are they using the, the proper equipment? You know, if, if someone's learning to sit fly in non-free fly friendly equipment, that's obviously a concern. Uh, so make sure that they have the appropriate equipment. 
are they trained? So first basic safety rule is the skydivers have to be trained and endorsed. So if they're not trained to perform a particular type of jump, then they should not be jumping. Also sufficient time, don't just take their word for it. Um, you know, I've had people rush into the van last minute and try to squeeze in a coach jump and it's it's kind of a waste of money for the person to be missing you know the the, the briefing and debriefing is a major part of uh, the whole jump plan so uh, don't neglect to give yourself sufficient time to do all those things that is the goal for the jump smart so I'm not going to go through, you know, coach one, one oh one again, but uh, make sure it's actually a reasonable goal. It's not something crazy and is relatively attainable for the person to do. Um, otherwise, it's, you know, wasting everybody's time. So and some uh, external factors to consider, uh, such as the weather. Uh, new drop zone, new aircraft, uh, not being current for the, well, I guess that's a personal factor, but those sorts of things are all, all considerations that you have to take into account. So that leads me to the next question is, what are some of the things that you do to get current as a coach or instructor? I am missing my chat. Let go. There it is. Tunnel. Yeah, that's a good one. So obviously we have a, a not a full year skydiving season in Canada. So tunnel is a good one to, to keep current in over the winter. Go to a safety day. Yeah, those. That, well, that's a good point. Yeah, let's go to safety day. Jump. Go down south and jump. Um, attend this meeting if I'll get my rainy gear. So, finally, enough. Um, well, this year is my first year on the CWC, so I literally spent all winter thinking about skydiving, going through PIMS, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I have never felt like more prepared coming off of, of an off season than this year. So, it's it's uh surprising uh, how much just Keeping your brain engaged with those sorts of things will, will help you over the winter. Review basic safety rules, tech recs, and the COP prerequisites. Good one. Uh, be mindful that the COP prerequisites might change over the winter. Uh, AIM report. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like Allison wrote that one. Uh, review the AIM reports and summaries. Um, so all, the AIM reports are posted on the CSPA website. Uh, and there, there's a lot of good information that you can learn from uh, opportunities to, um, you know, to, to enhance your own instructional and that sort of thing and identify issues. So, uh, yeah, definitely review the CHP AIM reports. Um, and not just that, but uh, all, all the committees post their uh, annual reports uh, around the time frame of March, and they're all viewable on the CSPA website. So. Uh, take the opportunity to read through them as much as you can Friday, much Friday freak out. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of learning from other people's mistakes uh, is definitely a effective way of learning. And It's funny is that I used the Friday freak out video for the last safety seminar. So um, so some of the things that I jotted down, um, and I know what well, I know Brian talked about it last year was um we thought about maybe a good idea would be to jump a student gear, uh, particularly if you're GCIing a whole bunch. Um I did a jump last year on student gear and I apparently had totally forgotten what it feels like to be in that equipment. So uh, it might be worth using the gear that your students are going to use to get familiar with it. Make sure your gear and membership is up to date. Yep, yeah, that's a that's an important one too. 
Uh, another suggestion that I would say is I, I mean, I used to do it more when I was a little bit newer into coaching is uh, I go out and practice the maneuver series that I would be coaching. So uh, make sure you still know how to do it yourself and uh, how to break down each skill effectively. And also jump. Don't just teach. Um, you need to continue on developing your own skills. Uh, so that way you can pass on that information and learning and, and you don't get uh, like skill fade from that. And one of the things I just wrote down because it kind of came to mind um, is like coaching and instructing should be treated like a discipline. Um, there's a lot uh, obviously to it. Uh, our in the CSPA and CAC programs, there's a a lot to take in, right? It's very technical. So it's easy to forget about concepts and things. So uh, and go out and you know, teach, don't just do the one a year, the bare minimum. Um, yeah, treat coaching and instructing like it is a discipline because, well, to me it is. And my last thing I jotted down was to keep involved over winter. Uh, like I mentioned already, you know, this winter I spent a lot more time doing skydiving stuff. And uh, yeah, it's definitely helped me prepare for the for the new season. Let's see as much of chats going on. Practice series, get out and do some jumps. Yep. And some coaching centric drills to do with another coach. Yeah, that's a good one. I know some of the PFFIs like to go and do some PFFI exits also. Uh, those sorts of things. Go and jump with some A cops. They need the two A's. Yep. So Brian, you can jump with all the A cops this year. All right, so let's. Uh, that is what I had for the for the safety aspect, the specific safety aspect. Um, if anybody wants to chime in with any thoughts, feelings, or questions, just raise your hand or type it in the chat, and we can. Uh, happy to talk about it more. But without further ado, we will go through some of the uh, review points that I had. Local first jump course. Yeah, so you should be familiar with the material that you're teaching, of course. Yeah, I think I have that point coming up. Uh, so as you may or may not remember that uh, the training that CSPA coaches uh, receive was, was developed in, with the uh, Coaching Association of Canada. Uh, so they've been, the concepts that we have been taught, uh, they work. They've been studied by Coaching Association. And in order for it to work in the most effective way, it obviously needs buy-in from the instructors and the coaches to, to use the system to its full potential. So in my experience of teaching for various sports and work and whatnot, um, I really do think that the CSPA system is superior to a lot of other systems and, 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 it, and there is a lot of effective coaching techniques in the system. So use it to its full potential. So it's important as instructor or coach to maintain currency on standards. Uh, the ever-changing uh, system, you know, it, it's dynamic and, and it does change. Uh, oops, we have someone else waiting in the room. Yeah, so don't be afraid to, to admit you don't know the answer to a question. Don't BS it. Um, that's an important one. So it goes back to the point of being humble, right? Um, if you don't know the answer, that's totally cool. 
that might be an opportunity for you to go find the answer or um, have them direct them to where, you know, the general location of the answer, like the PIMS, uh, as kind of a learning exercise for both of you. So uh, maintain currency on standards. So don't be afraid to learn from other coaches or instructors. Uh, there's often, you know, you could be doing the same thing for years and years and years and a new coach too will come in and show you to do it a different way. Uh, just because you have more ratings or whatever doesn't mean you're any better or any worse than anybody else. Don't be afraid to learn from other people because there's a lot of good information that you can learn from other people. Um, I also just like to creep on other coaches and instructors and watch them teach. There's a lot of information that you could pull from, from their lessons to adapt to your own. Reference material uh, and lesson planning. Uh, so use your reference material. Uh, plan your lessons properly. Don't negate to... Uh, to prepare your written lesson plans. Uh, I like to get people to review reference material ahead of time. So if I'm doing like a sport canopy endorsement, I will have them do some self-study with the sport canopy endorsement uh, reference guide, those sorts of things. Uh, Icarus has a good um, article called like 20 points to being a better canopy pilot or those sorts of things. So Use reference material. The PIMs, the PIMs are there, and they're currently being updated. So, uh, encourage uh, self learning with uh, with your novices and students. So, don't neglect the pre and post jump training. So, this goes back to the time management um, point I had earlier. Make sure you have enough time to do your lessons, uh, both brief and debrief it. If you're if you're not spending time to do the proper training ahead of time and afterwards, they're your novice or students not really getting their money's worth, and and there might be some important safety things that they might have missed or. You know, spend the time with them. They did. They're spending a lot of money for you to train them. I already talked about this one, but use reference material. Document properly. So, since I became the COP processor um, over the winter, I'm been trying to make it my goal as as much as possible to have COPs processed. In the shortest amount of time, usually I can get them done in a couple days, uh, but it's I can only do that if the instructors and coaches help me do that by filling out stuff properly. So I'm going to go real quick through um, some of the documentation requirements, not to teach you how to sign a logbook. But basically to explain what my role is when I'm doing these C&D licenses. So here's an example of some of the CSPA requirements for a jump. Uh, so basically what I have to do is review a logbook and see does it match the requirements because that logbook forever gets put into the system and if anything happens down the road it's all there so uh, I am not prepared to take on any liability for a volunteer position for a coach jump that you guys did that isn't filled out properly so uh, it's important to get this filled out properly not just to make my life easier but to have uh, to to, to to get you know the C, particularly the season D cops pushed through. Um, I've only been doing this since you know the uh, end of October, so I don't know what a summer's like yet. But I could imagine it gets pretty busy 
and if stuff isn't filled out properly, it will probably go to the bottom of the list. And so that way I can keep on cracking through people's uh, logs that have been filled out properly. So it's a couple quick major points that would help me if you put the jump numbers in the dates. Some of the other stuff is forgotten, but I can extrapolate information by looking at the date or the jump number and I can often make it work. So uh, try to get those in there. Uh, the important stuff is the performance requirement should reflect the actual skills that are being done. So have it either worded the same or similar and make it very obvious that they had passed those skills. Um, if you need to clarify any points, throw it in your the your section of the logbook. Um, I, I know some people like to put in uh, past all skills or good for B cop, those sorts of things. Those are very helpful for me. And your signature, please, please use your CSPA number. The system is a bit wonky in that it takes me like three times the amount of time to look up your COP number, to cross-reference it to the list of, of um, CSPA numbers, that sort of thing. It's just super helpful if you put your uh, CSPA number in it. Uh, and if you need to countersign or sign on top of somebody else's log to verify that it's done, uh, make sure that it has the correct rating and CSPA number on it. Uh, there's some people that are better at it than others. I know, for example, Dave Withrow, when I get a Dave application coming through, there's never any problem. They're all signed properly. And some other SSEs aren't as uh, on the ball about those sorts of things. So quick review. Um, again, I'm not here to try to teach you the Coach One course again, but um, I have spent a significant amount of time this winter actually trying to digitize the uh, the Coach One course. So I spent a lot of time reading all the Coach One techniques. Uh, and one of the things that kind of stands out for me is um, the motor learning skills. So there's obviously a whole bunch of stuff in the Coach One skills that you learn that, uh, you know, there's hundreds of pages in that manual uh, of different techniques and skills and stuff to use. Uh, but this one stands out more than anything else. So I'm not going to read them out to you, but this is a quick little refresher of what it is. It's all like the position reproduction, uh, the pressures, eyes closed, those sorts of things. Um, these are stuff that, you know, I did my coach one course and I kind of forgot about it and then I can't dial back into it. I'm like, oh, all, all these stuff, these, th these things work really well. Uh, and don't be afraid to try new ones if you know your if your normal technique doesn't work. Uh, if somebody's having a difficult time learning, um, review the basics and um, yeah, practice them. They're they're all good stuff. Don't forget primacy recency concepts. So oftentimes, the coaches and novices. Um, or sorry, the students and novices uh, remember the first and last things you told them. So uh, consider that when you're delivering your information. Uh, chunking. So like small pieces of information at a time. Don't just overwhelm them with a bunch of useless information, uh, background theory, that sort of thing. Just give them enough uh, to keep them safe. and the basics of the skill. Focus on positives. So I mean, we've all seen people in the past, you know, like, oh, you did this wrong, you did that wrong. Did... That's not really helpful or constructive. Uh, and it kind of makes people feel like crap. Uh, there's a time and a place for, you know, certain dangerous behaviors to, to talk about those. But uh, in a general coaching and instructional mindset, you should be focusing on the positives and building on those. 
Remember to papath for anybody, for everybody who's probably forgotten what a papath is. Uh, you know, prepare yourself, uh, present it, have them apply it, and then give them feedback. Does the that structure works uh, and use it. Review material for yourself. Um, so one thing I I personally got in the habit of uh, when I was just co starting coach tuing is um, delivering the proper information with uh, canopy stuff. So I was constantly referring back to the uh, support canopy endorsement manual for information and graphics and that sort of thing. So don't be afraid to review that sort of material. Ratings renewals. So I was surprisingly shocked at the amount of people applications I've got in from people who did coach jumps or, in, or instructional jumps that had not renewed their ratings. Uh, and people were getting mad at me for it uh, for some reason. At the end of the day, if you're not a if you haven't filled out your revalidation document and you're not renewed, you are not you don't hold that rating. So you should not be teaching courses or coaching and that sort of thing. Uh, is not a very difficult thing to maintain. So, uh, and again, it's not going to be on me to just push people through their COPs because you failed to renew your ratings. Uh, is there any comments, questions, queries, or anything like that before I move on to the CSPA updates? Welcome, Wade. You're late. All right. So I will go to the CSPA updates. <clears throat> so the CWC has been pretty busy over the winter. A uh, whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, one of the projects that I worked on was the amendments to, there's an amendment to the SSE manual. So I noticed with all these logbooks that weren't completed properly that there was nothing in the SSE manual that even really talked about what is a good log entry and why so uh, that's been placed into the SSE manual now Tim 2a is a massive project I spent many many hours uh, from, along with everybody else in the CWC reviewing it uh, basically the uh, the PIM 2A is being modified to make it look a little bit more professional. Um, the graphics are all being changed to look like the look like the PIM 2B, uh, and with a future goal of merging PIM 2A and 2B into one manual. Uh, so that's uh, been a project. I'm not sure when that's coming out. Maybe sometime this year, but. Uh, we're lucky enough to have the CWC chair here to answer any of those questions, if you'd like. Um, so, so the um, PIM-1, there were some, uh, some tweaks made to the PIM-1. Um, so one of the things that was co coming up a lot was with the ACOP, who the ACOP can, who can that the ACOP can jump with because uh, there's some confusing wording in there. But if you look at the PIM one that came out this year, the uh, requirement for the 100 jumps has been removed. Uh, COP processing. I put that point down, but I quite honestly can't remember what point I was trying to make. But I'm the new COP processor. Uh, so oh, Allison has a point. Go ahead, Allison. Um, I just wanted to clarify with the PIM one ACOP hundred jump requirement change. So does that so that is reinforcing the fact that an ACOP and an ACOP who are have both received a two way endorsement are able to jump with each other, um, and do two ways with each other upon I think it had coach two approval, but I don't know if that's still there. So because it had a B cop in there, but that. I think I removed, right? Yeah. So the only thing that was actually removed from this was the 100 jump requirement. Um, 
uh, I'd have to double check to see the exact wording of it. But, uh, well, there you go. Go ahead, Danny. So the, can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah, so the, the hiccup we ran into was, okay, we were letting A's with 100 jumps and the extra coaching being allowed to jump together. The issue we ran into is you only need 50 jumps to get your B. So the way it was written, you could argue someone with 50 jumps and a B wouldn't maybe be allowed to jump with an A comp, even though a B is allowed, but this person doesn't have the 100 jumps. It just created a inequity in the way that was written. So we just took out that 100 jump requirement. The rest of the statement remains the same. So Danny, just to clarify, an A cop holder who's been two-way endorsed can jump with a B cop holder, but they both have to have 100 jumps, or is, am I- No, 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 we took out the 100 jumps. Oh, you took out the, oh, okay, gotcha. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, that makes way more sense. Sorry if I added confusion. You're welcome. All right. Next. So the Sport Canopy endorsement manual uh, has been updated. Uh, I'm not sure if it's out yet, but uh, we had a final review the other day of it, and it's looking spectacular. Like, it's really good. The graphics are awesome on it. Um, so be sure to check that out once it gets released, if it's not already. Um, yeah, and, and make your novices take a look at it. So. Uh, it will be very helpful. And there's a lot of good graphics in there that will help uh, illustrate different concepts. The other thing is there's now a LF nomination process. Um, not that there wasn't before, but uh, people who are interested in doing their learning facilitator training, uh, there's now a document up on the CSP website where people can self-identify uh, their interest uh, so it's um, the old process is still the same where you can be recommended by a current LF, but you can also self-identify as well. Um, so if there's anybody thinking about going down that route, route uh, don't hesitate to put in a form uh, and ask questions if, if you have any, because I've been through the process in the last year or so, so. All right, so uh, anybody feel free to chime in if there's any other points you wanted to make on that section. But uh, my final uh, collection of thoughts that I wasn't really sure where to place them all, but I wanted to to pass on. Um, and one thing I want to do is encourage everybody to get involved, whether it be at your local drop zone, uh, CSPA, those sorts of things. Um, the instructors and coaches are the future of the sport. Without uh, without instructors and coaches, um, there it really is no CSPA. Um, so get involved. Uh, you'd be surprised at how rewarding it is. There's a lot to learn, uh, and you can make it better. Uh, one other point I wanted to talk about was um, CWC and CSPA. Um, I didn't really understand what the CWC really did. Uh, and I feel that there's a bit of opportunity there to, to talk to people about what we actually do. Um, I had my first meeting there and I can't remember around Christmas time. Uh, and I was kind of blown away by the amount of work and stuff there is to do um so basically in a nutshell we get together we discuss a number of items whether it's from the board of directors or people that submit different issues and that sort of things and then we make suggestions up to the board of directors and at the end of the day uh, we only make recommendations it's the it's the board that makes the decision of whether or not to implement anything uh, and don't be afraid uh, to submit any errors, updates, and suggestions. Um, I used to annoy Danny 
constantly about about this sort of thing. That's probably why I got sucked into the CWC to deal with it myself. But uh, if you're noticing problems in the PIMS or test questions, those sorts of things, write it down. Let us know because uh, <laughs> because we'll we will change it. And and I guarantee you, if it gets pushed to CWC. It, it, it will end up on the agenda and we will talk about it uh, and hopefully make it better, which leads me to the next point of evolving the sport. So without new people coming in, um, not going to be any new ideas. So um, be proactive in those sorts of things. Don't be afraid to make suggestions. Uh, you know, over the years, I've heard people complaining with each other. Oh, why does CSPA do this or do that? And, or here's a problem, but nobody's ever identified it to anybody. Um, uh, we're pretty much all volunteers. So, um, it, we might not necessarily, we don't have a full-time job in thinking about these things. So it's important that everybody does their part to make it better for everybody else. Last questions. Like if you, don't know why something's done a certain way, ask. Um, and like it was mentioned earlier, if we don't know the answer, it gives us a reason to go find it. Um, but mm, we're always receptive to, um, to different ideas uh, if you have any. So don't, don't be afraid to, to suggest new things and ask a lot of questions about why things are done certain ways uh, because the decisions that are often made in the CWC are talked about extensively. So they're not really just made at the drop of a hat. They're like, we have, there's usually a lot of thought that go that goes into everything. So seek further education opportunities. Um, there's if you, on the CAC website, you can, uh, take other courses, you know, there's safe sport and there's a few other ones that I found relatively interesting. Uh, they're worth doing, uh, take other rating courses. Uh, I ended up, I kind of ended up just taking courses that ended up being convenient to me at the time. And I have like all the ratings now, uh, but you'd be surprised at what you'll learn, even with a course that you're not interested in. Um, I had no interest in doing SSI at first, and then I found it to be one of the most rewarding experiences personally, and um, it forces you to answer a lot of strange what-if questions. <laughs> It'll make you a better skydiver. I, I really feel that the SSI course for having no jumps on it is was uh, one of the best courses to, to force you to learn for yourself. Um, so yeah, uh, that's kind of it. What I, what I threw together. Um, if there's anybody that wants to discuss anything, suggest ideas, ask any questions, that sort of thing, please feel free to bring it up. Thank you, Dustin. Uh, we do have a question from Wade. So just so you know, you guys are still all unmuted. So just uh, bear with me as I try to be the moderator through this. So Wade, floor is yours. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just curious about uh, GCI. Is GCI still um, just a module, essentially, that you tack on to C1? Uh, I just had someone ask questions. I can't remember who it was. And I last I remembered, it was just a module. Essentially, you tacked on to see when it was more of a conversation. Is that still the case? Yeah, so good question. Yes, it, it not. there's been no changes to the GCI program. It's not necessarily just a tack on to the, um, to the Coach 1 course, but it can be done at any time. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be attached to the Coach 1 course. Um, this is something that uh, there's a lot of appetite to push people to do as the GCI this year. Uh, so um, if anybody is interested in doing GCI and has a coach one rating, uh, 
make sure to reach out because we'll get you set up one way or another to get you your GCI. Um, and it's going to be more uh, pushed in uh, in ratings going forward to, to make sure everybody has the opportunity to uh, get the GCI rating. Go ahead, Alice. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I just more of a comment around GCI. Uh, a really good resource for GCIs, if you are a GCI, is the AIM reports, uh, especially around all the students, um, primarily because their biggest issue is with landing um, and those kind of things. And often you'll see or you'll hear, you know, that the student wasn't listening per se or anything like that. But if you're a drop zone owner or if you're a GCI, uh, really reviewing those uh, your standard operating procedures around that and your equipment and how you go about that, um, because ultimately it's a working partnership between your student and yourself as their GCI. So I know just from the technical safety committee side and AIM reports, uh, we really, really want to start reducing a lot of those incidences at landing um, would just be my comment on that. So those AIM reports are a great uh, reference. Anybody else? I don't know. All right. Well, I think that's it, unless anybody else has anything else to chime in on. Um, thanks for your time and uh, thanks for the opportunity because it kind of forced me to, to do some, some thinking anyway. Awesome. Dustin, thank you so much. Look at this. It's like not even an hour. Look at that. Um, I will, if people want to get onto their videos and stuff like that, um, I just am going to share my screen here really quick so that I can go from there and we will open this up to a full Q and a, uh, oh, what's going on here? Sorry. Share screen. Yay. Hey, there we go. Uh, whoops. Ah. So I just, uh, again, Dustin, thank you. And I see many friendly faces on here, which I love. I uh, saw John as well. We will open this up for some more open discussion once I'm all done here, that way we can go. I will just ask again, if I do unmute everybody, just be mindful of who's speaking and those kind of things, because I often find too, that it's the conversation and the discussions afterwards that we really learn a lot from. Uh, these are just to kind of start stemming everyone thinking about the safety. The season has approached us. Some drop zones are already open. Um, so it's just about having those conversations and reminders. Uh, so a friendly reminder on our end is that uh, we are every, every week through the month of April, we have a safety seminar that's happening. Next week is the uh, one for riggers and packers. And I do encourage, like, if this isn't just riggers, but if you're curious about equipment, this is open to everyone. So it doesn't just have to be, if you have to be, you are packers. If you pack your, unlike me, if you pack your own gear, you, you are a packer. So um, I'm, I'm pleased to announce that, again, Bill Pentney, who is the CSPA Technical and Safety Committee Chair, he'll be, ho he'll be on that as a panel discussion with some guest speakers. That one is actually going to be held next Thursday. So... Not the typical Tuesday, but it will be held next Thursday. And you'll be seeing posts again, um, you know, Canadian fun jumpers and everything like that. But of course, you can get a hold of Skydive Vancouver Island and we can let you know all the links. Following that, the following week, we have the amazing Caitlin Escott, better known as Compton. She is giving a wingsuit safety seminar. And we had actually had one back in, I think, 2021, 2020, uh, with Scott Callantine. And we figured, you know what? It's time. There's lots more information that's come out since then. And it's time to refresh our knowledge on wingsuiting. So any of you wingsuiters out there, start sharing with your friends. It's going to be a great seminar as well. And then finally, anyone who is a tandem instructor um we have we've been doing the tandem one now for five years I'm super excited to have john kieran on board and of course erica dufour um we're really excited to have them these um these ones are really just they're really conversational based um so 
I do have beside there, you see the YouTube a channel. We did create a YouTube channel last Last year, it's the SVI Skydive Safety Seminars. You just have to search that in YouTube. And it has all of our past seminars. So whether it came from the different components of our safety days, uh, our safety day from this year is on there. This uh, seminar is going to be on there as well. There's past ones where Danny, you have spoken. We've had um, Monique speak as well. and uh, But we've also had Canopy Pilot. Nick Helfridge has done a seminar on canopy piloting. Uh, Derek Clausen did one two years ago on movement with a lot of focus on tracking angling. Um, and if you have read the AIM reports this year and you are a tracker and angle flyer, I strongly recommend you go pull up uh, this uh, seminar that he did and watch it. It's a great uh, safety review. And for those of you who are tandem instructors, there is one that was actually created last year and it's just EPs. It, it goes over the John at Skydive the Ranch in the US had a mock up and everything. So it goes through an amazing all the EP specific stuff. And um, so those are just really things to kind of be mindful of and watch. Four. And again, we are all Packers. Yes, Danny. No, absolutely. Uh, so again, Dustin, I can't thank you enough as someone myself who is on three of the committees with CSPA. It is so true. Um, you know, your voice is important and, uh, you know, it's one thing to BS and complain around a drop zone. It's a whole other thing to be, um, part of change, if you will. And, uh, so that's the important factor. And I know the CWC has worked insanely hard well for many years uh, but this past winter in particular danny i don't know if you want to have an opportunity to there's been changes for the uh pff aff conversions that came out that's huge uh, i know for myself too there's changes that came through uh the whole drop zone safety officers your whole entire role has been fully defined and described and is now in uh pim one actually so that uh, I know there's some drop zone owners on here. So you might want to go check that out as well. Um, yeah, so I, I am probably going to continue recording it because like I said, there's usually lots of great information that comes in our sessions, but I am recording it. So let's keep it all professional. Uh, and I will allow everyone to unmute themselves here. Pardon me as I go there. And again, thank you so much. Justin. All right. So allow, there you go. I have allowed everyone to unmute themselves. If you do have a question now, or you want to just make comments or anything like that. Um, hi, Shannon. I uh, invite you to, yeah, turn on your videos. I will say that I actually blocked all of you from being able to show your profile pictures. I apologize. There was big reasoning behind that, <laughs> but, uh, you're welcome to put your video on now if you want to see our friendly faces. I don't, yeah, mine's on. Uh, but yeah, if anyone has questions, comments, engage in conversation. Uh, I see that Dan Withrow is also on this, or Dan, Dan, Dave. Dan Dave, Dave is one, a very new board of director with CSPA too. So yeah, there's lots of uh, yay CSPA. Uh, although I do love all my USPA counterparts as well. So I got Donnie Graves on here. So yeah, I'll leave the floor to everyone. If uh, people have questions or comments, you can raise your hand if you like, or just try to step in, unmute yourself and go away. One quick thing I wanted to mention also, since there are some drop zone owners kicking around here, um, if there is a need uh, to get people their aeronautical radio certificates uh i'm accredited now to do the exam so i can i can do that online if, if anybody wants perfect thanks dustin guy of all trades so does that mean that your nickname is radio now but call me radio <laughs> <laughs> i was just gonna say that don't call me radio <laughs> Sorry, Dustin, I missed that. You said what radio course is that? Um, I can do the exams to get your ROC, your restricted operator certificate for the aeronautical radio to talk to, to on the VHF frequencies. Oh, that one. Okay, cool. Thanks. Oh, it's such a quiet crowd. Look at you Did guys. Did I miss anything important? 
Oh, Ben, thank you for joining us, Ben. Yes, tons of important stuff. Absolutely. It's time for Ben's presentation now. Yeah, Ben, it's your time to present. No, it's all good, Ben. You can go and watch the recording after. I do appreciate it's hard West Coast. We're trying to balance West and East and timing for these seminars. So I know that on the East Coast, it's kind of late. On the West Coast, people are trying to get off work and, and to get here. So it's yeah. always fine balance. And that's why we record it. <clears throat> um, if You're nobody fired, has ben. any questions or has any discussions, I'll stop the recording. Does anyone have any questions or comments? We're good. Uh, I am going to stop the recording then. Thank you again, everybody, for your time. And uh, yeah, we'll see you hopefully some of you next week.